Hi everybody, it's Nick from miniquadclub.com again. Um, this is part two of my review of the Thrust UAV Hyperlite 275 quadcopter. Um, just a little bit of information on that there, get a little focus. Um, I've been talking to EJ quite a bit um, over the course of this build, and he's been extremely helpful. Uh, I have to say that, um, you know, when we're buying these kind of kits from anyone, really, um, you know, customer service is number one. So it's really refreshing to be able to reach out and get some feedback, get some help, even get some tips. Um, you know, I really appreciate that. So props to uh, EJ and uh, Thrust UAV on that. Uh, and let's kind of review. So I kind of skipped ahead a little bit. Um, I didn't think anyone wanted to see me screw in some uh, standoffs. So right now, I'm at this point with the frame. The upper standoffs have all been mounted. The flight controller standoffs. I've been mounted on there. From the bottom view you can see I've mounted the six smaller standoffs that will hold the bottom plate which is also the power distribution board and um, you know everything's going along really well. Everything feels really light still. Uh, these are again just as I mentioned with part one these are just fantastic uh, the fit and finish of these so they, they just look great uh, and uh, through here is kind of unique I think um, it's kind of nice it's right here we got actually using 10 millimeter grub screws to go through the frame so got the motors mounted on the arms I have to give another you know shout out to uh, thrust UAV in this situation uh, you know how OCD I can be uh, this turns out that the holes that are cut in the arms that probably provide some rigidity and also save some weight are the exact width of three motor wires when you lay them side by side by side so for uh, those of us that are pretty OCD, uh, this, this arm is fantastic. Um, as you can see, the wires actually tuck through this little notch, uh, and then you mount the arm. So that's kind of the side view of that. It looks pretty slick. So I got a message last night um, from a club member about these motors, and they were kind of commenting on the fact that uh, they're only you know 2,000 kVs, and that they've heard that on 4S these have a tendency to uh, lose a magnet or you know get so hot that the glue gets soft and throw a magnet. And so I kind of wanted to address that for a second. Um, you know, many of us are out there on G10 frames, um, and you know from G10, and if anyone doesn't know this or does, I don't know, but G10 is an insulator. So when you're popping the throttle and keeping heavy throttle on a 4S setup, all that heat is going to stay right here with the motor and just start to cook those magnets in that, that motor. And, and eventually, you know, you will get some slippage unless those in, unless you got a really good quality motor. One of the things that I really like about this design, these arms being aluminum is that it acts like a giant uh, heat sink and so when you're running 4S on these 2000 kVs this motor is going to heat up and because of the design of the arm being aluminum that heat is going to actually dissipate down the arm and the best thing about that is is that the propeller is going to be spinning on top of this and the prop wash is actually going to cool down the heat sink. I'm going to get started here doing some soldering. I'm ready for the uh, power distribution part of the, the build so you know we're going to have these the ESDs are going to sit down like this and you can see there's a positive and a negative point on the board for each. So I have some cutting to do and some soldering to do to mount the four ESCs and then I'll be back. So as you can kind of see, I cut the wires to about three quarters of an inch and wired obviously the positives to positives, negatives to negatives. And I actually use a little bit of hot glue under each one of these ESCs. I know a lot of people use uh, wire ties, things like that, uh, double sided tape. I kind of like the hot glue doesn't leave a residue once you peel it off uh, so uh, kind of nice so I'm pretty happy with this actually for once my soldering job actually looks pretty good I wanted to take a second to talk about this rear piece so obviously four bolts through an aluminum arm through just a sheet of carbon fiber probably wouldn't be the sturdiest of uh, setups nor the most rigid so I just wanted to bring some attention to this other carbon fiber piece right here. It actually links the two arms together through the bottom and provides the rigidity of the frame. And I gotta say that, uh, again, as I've kind of been saying the whole time, this this frame is extremely stiff. Um, you know, feels really good. Uh, there's really no give. So um, I'm gonna keep building here, and we're gonna see what we got. Just want to give you guys a little tip uh, <clears throat> if you're gonna build the uh, hyperlight. So there's these grub screws that hold the ESC um, smaller standoff that holds the ESC plate or the uh, power distribution plate and they go through the frame and into another larger standoff right here that attaches to the top. Uh, just a little tip, make sure that you don't put those on 
uh, until you get your arm on there. Um, I jumped the gun a little bit and uh, due to that fact had to actually take it back off which again <clears throat> certainly no fault of the uh, the kit or anything like that just me not planning ahead and getting a little bit too excited so I'm just kind of hand tightening these for now um, just to get them lined up I'll go back in and, and snug them up here in a little bit and then I'm gonna put this just so you guys can see I'm gonna give a couple threads to this a grub screw again into the bottom by hand looks like there's quite a bit of uh, sticking out there and I'm just gonna go real quick and and get this guy on there. I wanted to talk about um, camera mounting options for a second before I move any further along with the build. So currently I have um, a Mobius on the top of my Spanky frame so just to give you an idea of size uh, right here you could easily put the Mobius do a wrap strap around the top plate and you'd be good to go if you wanted to run your Mobius. Um, underneath Mobius, what's hiding under there? Whoa! Surprise! <laughs> there's the GoPro and so you can tell um, by how this GoPro mounts I'm gonna try to hold it with my finger here and move my receiver um, you can see that there's a nice area and lip in front of where the GoPro actually mounts so the nice thing about that is that when you mount the GoPro in here um, there's some space to where when you do a head-on collision and you will um, that you're actually gonna get some protection there so let me let me stack this again to show you exactly how far in um, so if I line up the power button right with the hole as we talked about earlier, take the frame off. So there's a, probably about a quarter inch of carbon fiber in front of that lens. Um, you know, I think that's a hell of a lot better than mounting it on the top. And I certainly think it's, you know, going to protect it. Uh, I've seen one of them crash into a tree at pretty high speed and uh, the GoPro was fine. So I, I kind of am pretty excited about uh, seeing how that GoPro lens would be safe in there. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to mount the GoPro in there yet, uh, but the nice thing is is that obviously it's, it was, uh, the frame was made for it. I mean, the actual height of it is, is just about perfect to mount it in there. You can reach it and hit the button. Uh, and again, there's, you know, a good, uh, you know, a good quarter inch of space between the front. Also, um, I'm going to be using, let me see here, I'm going to use, be using my old Fat Shark Cam for this build and if I can find it one second here ah. so I'm gonna be using this guy uh, for this build just for now it's, it's the one I have lying around that it's a spare and one of the things I want to show you about it is is that if you take this off of here and you do want to use a Mobius and a camera like this with a fat shark <clears throat> you, I think I haven't checked I haven't tried this yet but we're gonna we're gonna try it right here live on camera here I believe that you could actually run the Mobius in here and yep just in there you could actually stack both cams right inside the frame so your FPV cam if you have a, a mini cam like such as this and your Mobius camera will actually fit inside the frame top and bottom and I gotta say that uh, that's pretty nice um, normally I'd reverse mount these and put the Mobius on the top plate such as this um, and, and put this guy under it, but I think that uh, and for this build, you know, if I'm not going to be running the GoPro all the time, I think I would, uh, I think I'm going to defer to this right here and, and run them top and bottom right here. So we'll see how how well it pans out. But it's nice that there's some options. Um, <clears throat> a lot of frames out there really don't have a an option when you're going to mount your cameras, and a lot of them, you know, claim to be able to carry a GoPro, but then you get a GoPro on it and it doesn't fly quite right. So pretty excited to actually have a frame that. Uh, they can support a GoPro and uh, see what they you know. See what the, how the other half lives when they really have that beautiful high-res video. Um, Mobius camera obviously is a, a nice camera for the money, and I have zero issue with it from that perspective. But there's no denying that the video quality on a um, GoPro is, is a lot better. So uh, that being said, uh, it's time to move on to the next step of the build. So I'll be back. Okay, so I've reached the point in the build where all the arms have been put onto the frame. Uh, the power distribution board has been mounted to the bottom. As you can see from this profile shot, um, there's plenty of room for 20 amp ESCs in there. I'm using Tiger motor um, 12 amps, so you know they fit in there just fine, and 20 amps will as well, and probably something even bigger. So just FYI, if you're uh, wondering, um, this battery strap got that all mounted up here. Just want to let you guys know uh, I have some battery straps from other places, and they're they're actually not this nice. Um, this is actually rubberized. These four little lines are rubber. 
so it really grips on to whatever it's sitting against so I'm sure once the lipo is in there and it's strapped down it's not going anywhere so um, ESC wires coming up from the top ready for the flight controller mounting I put a uh, lost model alarm or LMA on the uh, hyperlight this one was on my spanky at one point um, this thing can be bought at um, lostmodelalarm.com I believe funny enough um, it's only a couple of bucks and it uh, has helped me find my other quad in some pretty high grass numerous times so definitely worth the investment and if you get stuck in a tree even more so because you can flip it and hopefully figure out where you're at and get, get your quad down. Um, receiver's been mounted to the frame uh, and then up front uh, I have my old fat shark CMOS camera uh, mounted up front for just testing uh, and I'll end up mounting the Mobius on the top of the top plate. Just a quick note about this camera, it's horrible. Um, and uh, I say that with all the love and care I possibly can. Uh, these CMOS cameras are junk. If you're flying FPV with a fat shark kit, uh, I have the Predator V2, and you're frustrated because you think your goggles are horrible and you just wish you could afford $500 goggles because you just think they're going to be so much better, let me tell you, go buy a $40 Piezo 420 board camera and use it. The quality of the picture that you will get even in the Predator V2s is so much better, you're going to thank me for it, so get rid of this thing, go with the Piezo 420. Um, for 40 bucks, you're going to have such a better FPV experience. I haven't hit a power line since switching because you can actually see them, so it's great. Um, a quick note on that for fat shark users like myself, you're going to need to wire in a step up from your VTX when you, if you want to use the same kind of uh, one cord from the VTX to turn on the gun off the camera and send signal and everything. You're going to want to use a step up to 12 volts because um, the fat shark's only 5 volt. All right, so um, I got the uh, NAS32 all wired up and uh, some wire ties on there to keep it nice and clean, looking pretty good. Um, my replacement cam is on there batteries all mounted in the back. Uh, took it for a real quick line of sight flight just to make sure that everything was tuned okay and that um, everything was functioning and didn't get any white smoke so that's good. Um, so I'm going to mount the FPV gear on it now so just to give you a small idea of what kind of space you have left over to do this kind of stuff. Um, so underneath there's still, I mean, I didn't have to put this uh, lost model alarm way over here. I did because I could, um, which is nice, um, but I could have tucked it under here and left all kind of space, and there still is a ton of space. You could put a giant battery in here um, and really get some probably great run time, more so than uh, my other 250 frame, which really only holds in the frame a 1300 or 1400, um, maybe 1500. You could put a bigger battery on the top of it, but I really like to keep the battery inside the frame. So with this particular design, using the uh, battery in the back, you can see you could probably fit a pretty massive battery. I'm thinking a 2200 uh, probably would fit in there. So obviously a 4S is what's recommended for the setup. I'm using a 3S right now just for testing. So just a uh, final overview before I go out and fly this thing FPV. Um, so I got the Mobius mounted at the top via wrap strap with some Moon Joe. The Fat Shark um, CMOS camera that comes with the Predator V2 kit installed for now. Uh, the receivers in there, the nays. I uh, use an SMA extension to, to uh, protect the VTX, which is mounted up underneath. I mounted it up front since I'm going to put a battery in the back. I figured that having some weight up front is going to be a good thing. And uh, all in all, I'm, I'm ready to go here. So I was really happy with the uh, settings I had so far when I flew line of sight uh, for a couple minutes in horizon mode. So I'm looking forward to uh, kicking it out of horizon and flying some rate with this thing. So, um, yeah. So there you have it. This is the... Uh, Trust UAV Hyperlite 275, all ready to go for FPV flight.